this town hall in support of uh, businesses that have been impacted in Jasper and you know, our hearts and thoughts are with all of you and have been for the past few weeks as you've been displaced. Uh, our intent with this was just to really support the Jasper Park Chamber. So this is their event. We're just here in support as, as Patty, obviously, and the staff and everyone else who've been displaced from their offices. We just want to make sure that we provide her with the resources she needs to provide you, her members, with some information around what to expect as you you come back into the community and what what resources and supports will be available for you um, from various levels of government. Uh, so before we get started, I just want to acknowledge that we are, Jasper is located on Treaty 6 and Treaty 8 territory. Um, we are obviously all of us in all over Alberta. So I just wanted to say that we are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today. We recognize the land as an act of reconciliation and gratitude to those whose territories we reside on or are visiting. And obviously our, heart, our hearts and thoughts are with all of the indigenous First Nations and Métis communities that have been impacted as well uh, by some of these, um, by the wildfires and some of these disasters. So with that, I would like to um, just say, you can say the chat. So one of the things that's gonna to happen today is we've, uh, set it up so that all of the speakers are going to be, if they're resourcing chat, or, um, if they're referencing any resources, if there are any links, um, we will make sure that those go into the chat. What we want to make sure you guys are aware of is how to save that chat so that you can take it with you after the call is over. So anybody who's wanting to do that, um, click on the chat icon so it's at the bottom of your Zoom window. When the panel opens, you can hover over the three dots at the top of the window. Click on those three dots and you can see the save chat function there. And so you can choose where you'd like to save the chat file on your device. Uh, it will be saved as a text file for future reference. So um, are you, Dana, able to put those instructions as well in the chat? Or did you already put them in there? <laughs> I have not, but I will now. Perfect, thanks. So if you, she would just add that to the chat as well so that anybody wanting to make sure that they uh, keep a record of all the resources we're gonna share with you today. Um, so just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of our speakers. We're gonna introduce them as they come up. Um, you know, just really, really uh, grateful to them for coming on to provide some high level information and overview. Um, I did wanna say though, I just wanna highlight that um, we have Minister Jones speaking on behalf of the government of Alberta, uh, but in addition, I just wanted to, you know, make sure that we are aware that we also have uh, Minister Joseph Shaw of Tourism and Sport. We also have MLA Martin Long for the West Yellowhead, and he is also the Parliamentary Secretary for Rural Health. Uh, we have MLA Tani Yao, who is the Parliamentary Secretary for Small Business and Northern Development. And we also just have a ton of support from many of the ministries. So we have several staff members from all over. We have um, representatives from Jobs, Economy, Trade, Immigration and Multiculturalism, Affordability and Utilities, Energy and Minerals, Alberta Emergency Management, Municipal Affairs, the Treasury Board, Fi Treasury Board and Finance, Seniors Community and Social Services, Alberta Health, and mental health. So we have so, so many of uh, our colleagues in the, the GOA that are here and will be, will be available to support um, the questions at the end of the session. So we really wanna thank them all for joining us. So with that, I just wanna say a thank you to our colleague, Scott Crockett with um, Business Council of Alberta, uh, who helped uh, myself and Patty pull this session together today. And with all of that, Patty, I'm going to pass over to you to say a few words on behalf of Jasper Park Chamber or, or whoever you would like to do that. If you want to pass over to Paul, that's completely up to you guys. I think I'm going to be responsible for doing that this afternoon. And I appreciate the, uh, the introduction uh, and all the information that you've already provided in the first few minutes of this session. On behalf of the executive and board, I want to say thank you so very much for taking the time to join this business-focused town hall. Uh, we know that you're you're suffering personally and, and you're suffering professionally, many of you, and you have questions that you need answered. And I, again, want to thank Shauna of the Alberta Chambers of Commerce, the president and CEO, and also to thank Mr. Scott Crockett with the 
Business Council of Alberta. I want to keep putting that alphabet back up. Scott, sorry, like I want to put it in ABC order. Anyway, thank you both. And obviously, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much to all of our first responders, volunteers, whoever you are, wherever you may be, in whatever part you're playing. It's, it would never have happened um, in, to this degree and this quickly without all of you. The last thing I'm going to say is that the chamber is very much um, appreciative of the opportunity for residents to return and businesses to begin to assess their needs. And yes, we, we want to be able to welcome the world back as we have for decades and decades. Uh, but when it's appropriate, you know, when, when people have had an opportunity to absorb what they're going back to in 48 hours from now. Uh, so we thank everyone for their patience and their understanding. And we grieve with you in our in our own way, both personally and professionally. So with that, Shauna, I will turn that back to you. And I know you're going to moderate and I appreciate your help. It's my pleasure, Patty. And so without further ado, I will pass over to the Honorable Matt Jones, uh, Minister for Jobs, Economy and Trade. Matt. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Matt Jones. I'm Alberta's Minister of Jobs, Economy and Trade. Thank you all for joining us for this telephone town hall. And special thanks to the Jasper and Alberta Chambers of Commerce for organizing this important session. And to my colleague, uh, Martin Long, MLA for West Yellowhead, who is on the line and committed to the recovery of Jasper's business community. I would also like to acknowledge uh, Jasper business owners for joining us today, especially the challenges you're experiencing as you look to recover from this devastating wildfire. Alberta's government understands that getting back to business as soon as possible will be important for business owners and the community of Jasper. Business owners drive Alberta's economy while enhancing the, the unique character and social identity of their communities. Thanks to your restaurants, hospitality, activities and adventure programs, Jasper has attracted visitors from around the globe. As a government, we acknowledge the devastation the Jasper wildfire has had on so many Jasper businesses, workers and residents. And on behalf of Premier Danielle Smith and my government colleagues, I want to assure you that you are not alone through this process. We've been advocating for a coordinated swift response from all levels of government since the threat of the wildfire began. And we continue to work closely with both the municipality of Jasper and Parks Canada and partner organizations as they respond to the wildfire response and recovery. Our government is establishing the Jasper Alberta Canada Intergovernmental Re Redevelopment Committee, which is a mouthful. It's made up of senior government staff from the, the municipality of Jasper, Parks Canada, and Alberta's government. And the committee will provide joint oversight, coordination, and advice to elected, elected officials as Jasper recovers and rebuilds. We are also working with the Canadian Red Cross, who is helping to provide critical food, shelter, clothing, and monetary support to evacuees. The work of the Canadian Red Cross uh, in this tragedy, tragedy complements our government's emergency evacuation payments for those displaced. Alberta's government is looking at the ways that we can help businesses get back on their feet. Uh, alongside MLA Long, we are working to ensure their short and long-term success, especially during times of crisis. Uh, so we'll be there for residents and business owners by providing advice, coaching, financing, training, and funding opportunities through programs like BizConnect, uh, which helps businesses uh, with accessing vital resources while offering referrals to associations and organizations for additional support. I'm pleased to share that Jasper businesses governed by the Public Health Act regulations are allowed to reopen without an inspection as long as they follow the recommendations in the reopening buildings, homes, and businesses after a wildfire, wildfire guide. This means you can get back to business sooner. Uh, and uh, that can be found at albertahealthservices.ca. We want to ensure the concerns of local businesses and workers are heard. Premier Smith has been advocating for a coordinated, coordinated approach to the Jasper wildfire response since the beginning. And she continues to have important conversations to this effect with Prime Minister Trudeau. When all is said and done, Jasper will recover. And during this recovery, we, we want to expedite that recovery as much as possible while maintaining safety. Today's call is an early step on, on that path. Alberta has seen other communities impacted by wildfires in recent years. And through those experiences, we have demonstrated that we can get local economies back on track and reinvigorated. We have also learned that there is no single approach that will work for every community and every business. So today's session includes individuals from Alberta's government ministries, 
officials from the insurance, banking, and mental health sectors who can help address many of the questions that you may have. Rest assured, Alberta's government is listening closely to your concerns and continuing to, continuing to develop our coordinated approach to Jasper's recovery. I hope this town hall will provide you with some clarity and strength as you continue to move forward and make plans to rebuild your livelihoods and community. With that, back over to you, Shauna, uh, for the next part of our program. Thank you so much, Minister Jones. And we will, what we're gonna do is we're gonna defer all of the questions to the end. So if you have any questions that arise during the, the course of our presenters, uh, we will ensure that we have some time at the end of the call to address some of those. And Minister Jones, um, understanding if you're not able to stay with us that you have many staff uh, on the line that will be able to answer on your behalf. Uh, so again, thank you so much for your support and for being with us. Um, now I would like to hand it over to Mr. Gerald Soroka with the Yellowhead constituency, our, the MP for the Yellowhead constituency. Uh, Gerald? Oh, well, thank Hello. you. Sean. Yes, can you hear me fine? Very well, thank you. Okay, well, uh, I wanna welcome everyone here to this uh, town hall meeting. I know this is something that none of us wanna be doing right now. Uh, we'd love to be back in our community, uh, making the money and uh, having all the tourists that we normally do. It's been quite a struggle here the last couple of years, you know, right after COVID and we just started to get back into some kind of rhythm again and now this happens. So it's quite devastating. So that's some of the things that I think we really need to start looking at is more with the employment insurance uh, for our staff, as well as there's some business loans that are available too, that maybe we can start looking at how do we try to get back to I guess more of a fundamental way of financing our businesses once again, because it, it's been a really hard couple of years for, for everyone. And you know how hard it is to get staff even, so you can't even be at full complement before this to even, I guess, uh, capitalize on all the revenue opportunities. I'm gonna click in the chat there and I'll put in uh, several different links to uh, unemployment insurance, as well as then uh, CRA, Canada Revenue Agency and that, and some of these things that you might need to look at or might be helpful to some businesses, but it's, uh, it's a tough time. I know that there's a lot of employees have reached out to me already, and they're saying that they don't have quite enough hours. So we've reached out to the minister saying, can we go and somehow waive that because of the unique circumstances that have happened where, you know, we're very much seasonal here in Jasper. So that's something we need to look at as well as then how can we help our businesses? Because this, like I say, has been very devastating. And the other area that we really need to start looking at, unfortunately, there were besides homes, several businesses that were burnt out. How do we be, rebuild back quickly, as well as how do we deal with Parks Canada and some of their building and regulations too? So that's something that we need to be on top of. I know um, about two weeks ago when I was speaking with Parks Canada and I was talking about building um, permits and that, and they were saying, uh, they're very well aware of this. They've looked at Fort McMurray, Slave Lake, and other places like this, and they've determined what kind of bottlenecks that they've occurred in so that they can actually get a very good handle on this. And they're telling me that we are definitely going to have a much easier approach to development permits and uh, getting buildings back in place as quickly as possible. So I'm very optimistic that way. And I want to make sure that I hold uh, Parks Canada to this because we need to build back as quickly as possible because it's, it's a challenging place to build because you know the amount of or limited amount of housing that's available and bringing in more people and contractors to build is going to be a challenge. So that's some of the things we need to really look at is temporary housing, not only for our people, but also for people that are going to be there building and reconstructing the community. So I'll probably keep it short like that. And uh, if there's any more questions, like I say, I'll type in here what I have for different opportunities and you can click on those as well then. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. Just trying to get my, my microphone back on there. Thank you so much, uh, MP Soroka, for, for your time and joining us. Uh, now, if I could call on Chelsea Dawes, who is the Manager of Emergency Management and Planning for Jasper, Jasper National Park. Chelsea, are you on with us? 
Hi, Chelsea. Hi, can you see me? Perfect. Yes, we can. Thanks for joining us. Great. Um, thanks for having me here today. Um, yeah, just a correction on, on my, that's my, my work title, but I actually am the liaison officer right now for uh, the incident management team for Parks Canada. So I just wanted to give a quick update um, to make sure that everyone has the most recent information around the wildfire and, and all the pieces that are, are that have been posted up there. So um, the wildfire itself is still classified as out of control and it is estimated still at uh, about 33,000 hectares. Um, that proximity rema remains uh, in the containment of the Northwest perimeter of the fire that presents a risk to the town site. That is about 90 or still holds at 99% contained or controlled. So that is um, positive. We're on our way uh, into a positive re-entry for Friday. Um, the Utopia wildfire, which had come up on a few things yesterday, uh, which is in the Mayat area, is extinguished. So that is uh, no longer active uh, in that region. Um, and then most of the park continues to receive small amounts of precipitation overnight, which is which is very positive for the fire um, and is helping us make progress on the south end of the fire as well. Um, and we're still working uh, for conditions uh, for fire crews to ignite operations along that Jasper Sky Tram Road. Um, and as crews are working to demobilize equipment, we're being able to repurpose that equipment in other areas uh, and be able to really be actioning this fire with a lot of crews. So a lot of very positive um, work happening on the fire, which will allow us for the reentry to happen uh, tomorrow uh, on Friday. Sorry. Um, and just this afternoon, uh, the reentry require re reentry uh, steps were posted for residents and businesses. So that is available on the municipality website, uh, which I'm sure we'll, someone will touch on today, as well as on our Facebook page, um, which talks about how to access the gates, which way to come in and how that will all work. Um, so definitely uh, encourage everyone to check that out. Um, and our the process um, that was just sort of spoke about around uh, permits and rebuild, we're still working on that. We don't have up to date information on that at this time, but definitely working on things um, and uh, there'll be more information to come on that. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you for joining us, Chelsea. We really appreciate it. Uh, next, I'll hand over to Deputy Mayor of the Municipality of Jasper, Hel Helen Kelleher MP, as well as Councillor Ralph Merlick, Mer sorry, Melnick. Sorry, Ralph, if I killed your name. Thank you, Sean, and thank you, Patty. Um, Ralph and I are happy to be here today on behalf of Mayor and Council. Uh, mayor Ireland is very busy as Council, as um, Gerald Soroka, our MP, stated, you know, very busy in meetings with parks and um, helping with the rebuild. Um, it's been three weeks since the wildfire changed our lives permanently, altered our landscape in town of Jasper and Jasper National Park. Our community is hurting. We're supporting each other as best we can during this difficult time. Wild crews, first responders, incident command staff from both the municipality of Jasper and Parks Canada as well as countless others have worked tirelessly to create conditions for the safe re-entry of our residents and business owners later this week on Friday. We are thankful for the investment into the training and preparation of incident command and municipal staff as it assisted in coordinating emergency response we saw during the fire. Our re-entry is on Friday, August 16th, and it's a voluntary re-entry for residents only. Changes have been made to Friday's re-entry to provide safety, privacy for residents as they return home, including the use of resident re-entry guide for access into town. These changes are finalized today, and I urge residents to visit the Jasper Municipal website to understand the process for re-entry. I will in the chat a little later put in all the links to these websites. The evacuation order will reduce to an evacuation alert as the fire is not completely contained. Residents returning to town may seek smoke in the surrounding area as efforts continue to full extinguish and contain residual fire activity. For many, it will be the first time seeing our town and their property since the fire came true. Reentry guide is available on Jasper Municipal website along with many community resources under the Jasper Wildfire 2024 section of the website continually updated to provide current information and re-entry progress. Re-entry information will also populate the site as decisions are made and information con confirmed. Printed guides will be provided to everybody as they enter through the East Gate or the West Gate on Friday. And it will start at 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And I'm going to hand it over to Ralph, and he's going to talk about it at the Intergovernment Redevelopment Committee. 
Thank you, Helen. Uh, the the Jasper, Alberta, Canada Interdepartmental Inter Redevelopment Committee will be made up of senior government officials, staff from the municipality of Jasper, Parks Canada, the Alberta government, and will provide oversight, coordination, and advice to elected officials as Jasper recovers and rebuilds. And we are thankful for those partners from the various levels of government. We have, and they have developed, uh, a shared housing needs survey. It's an assessment survey to determine the traditional uh, transitional and interim accommodation needs within our community. And I need everyone on this call to make sure that A, they filled out that guide, that survey, and B, talk to everyone, whether they lost a home, didn't lose a home, were a temporary foreign worker, or a long-term resident, to fill out that guide, uh, that survey, so we can then determine uh, what we will need for the residents who are going to be returning to Jasper. Um, this data will be helpful in determining our path forward, working with all levels of government. It'll be, it's found on our web website under the drop down menu for Jasper Wildlife 2024 under recovery efforts, housing survey and it'll be open until August 23rd of this, uh, of this month. A, a survey to gauge re-entry transportation needs has also been developed to understand residents' needs and create supports. And I would like to, again, um, talk about the, uh, the need for people to go to the municipal website for the most current information. The re-entry guide is constantly being updated It'll guide people through how they're going to re-enter the community on Friday um, in a safe manner. And, um, you know, the, we make these changes as the situation has evolved. And it's, uh, it's important that people understand to minimize any sort of confusion at the park gate on the east end, where residents are gonna be asked to go through the actual gate and not the bypass will they all get a printed guide. That will contain the information to assist them to get into the town site. Very critical. I do wanna comment on one other thing, Helen, if I may, on the uh, recovery. Um, it's a long journey. We have a new normal. Um, yesterday's council meeting um, provided a number of financial relief to residents and businesses, and these included the immediate suspension for all damaged or destroyed properties of pre-authorized tax payments, as well as suspension and waiver of all water, sewer, solid waste, reco recycling charges as of the 22nd of July. A deferral of property tax collection beginning the 22nd of July, and that applies to all properties. Information requested from uh, administration on options and costs associated with refunding property taxes from July 22nd for all those damaged and destroyed properties and a suspension of penalties for all outstanding property taxes and utility bill payments from May and June of 2024. We have changed our committee meetings to be council meetings every week as opposed to alternating committee of the whole and um, council meetings. This will allow us to be able to make decisions on a weekly basis as opposed to the committee of the whole where we typically discussed and referred to council. Um, Helen, I don't know if you want to continue with um, the, the last part of our presentation. Sure, um, and just to add to that, on Friday, um, Red Cross and um, Community Futures West Yellowhead will be at um, Centennial Park and have a tent there to help businesses also. Recovery will be a long journey for Jasper as we adapt to our new normal and work. Rebuilding um, and work on rebuilding what was lost. Council will have a number of decisions at our regular meeting held on August 13th to intend to provide financial relief to our residents and businesses. These include the, I think you just read that, sorry. So 
every week at council, we will um, continue to work with our business community and um, we welcome any questions. Also, um, always send us emails and um, we will bring those points forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Helen and Ralph. We really appreciate the update and all of the resources. Um, and thank you for putting the links into the chat. Uh, so now we're gonna turn over to some content experts uh, to talk a little bit about some of the things that businesses uh, you know, at a high level can be paying attention to as you uh, re-enter, get back into your premises and uh, look at next steps as you uh, are looking forward to recovery. Uh, so if I could, I'd like to call on Kathy Keough. She's the Director, Director of Counseling Initiatives at the Calgary Counseling Center. And Kathy, I understand has also been um, uh, working with one of the evacuation centers there in Calgary. So Kathy, if I could pass over to you. Kathy, are you on the call with us? All right, well, we're we're actually a full 15 minutes ahead of schedule. So she likely will be maybe joining us here in the next few minutes. So knowing our next presenter is always quick on his feet, won't have a problem if we push him forward a little bit. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, our immediate past chair, Mr. Aaron Fleming. Uh, Aaron is also, uh, you know, has been a longtime insurance professional with Western Financial Group. And will just give us a really high level um, overview of like from the insurance perspective, some of the things that you can be thinking about uh, as you look at re-entry. So Aaron, hope you don't mind, we bumped you forward. Please do not leave your baggage. Yeah, no, that's that's no problem at all, Sean. Sorry, I, I didn't know that was the end of your sentence, but uh, yeah, no, I, I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Yeah, I've got everything together here. First off, um, as as everyone has said before me, but I uh, just want you to know uh, my sincere condolences to each of you that are dealing with this. Um, yeah, as, uh, as Shonda said, I've been in the insurance business for 17 years and um I've seen a number of wildfires as well as uh, know a number of people where it's directly affected. Um, I was reflecting uh, as, as I was preparing my, uh, what I was going to go over today, uh, I was reminded of uh, one of my clients who was in a, uh, a wildfire a couple of years ago and um, him and his friend were, uh, it was, it was a grass wildfire. Him and his friend were trying to fight the fire and um, they barely made it out of there. Um, the truck that they were in, that that they got to the edge of the field, that one actually burnt up and they lost it. It was a, it was quite a scary, a scary uh, incident that I worked on, and uh, pretty, uh, pretty sobering and humbling when uh, somebody comes and sits in your office and, and smells like the fire that they just barely survived. So it's uh, it's a, it's a pretty tough situation, and my heart definitely goes out to all of you there. So, um, and and I will help in any capacity that I possibly can with with Jasper. So not only just to give you a brief overview, but if there's anything to follow up with, um, I'm I'm happy to be here. Have somebody else on our team with Western Financial Group uh, help out. But uh, so yeah, as as Shauna said, I'm the past chair of the chamber. Um, I've been in the chamber network for for 12 years and insurance for 17. Um, insurance response. There's a number of things to think about, and the very high level thing that I would look at is number one. Um, first and foremost, your relationship with your broker, um, an opportunity to, to get together with them and to review the coverage that you have um, and to, uh, to see how that will respond. Um, the, the hope would be, as, as I'm designing an insurance policy for one of my clients, is the hope would be that at the end of the day, when they have a loss, that they're out there deductible and that they're back in their business um, you know, being able to be made whole through their insurance policy. And I hope that that's the case for, for the majority of you. But uh, when I look at, when I look at a couple of things, obviously I look at your, your business, but as well as your homes, um, if there was anyone with homes affected. And so business, very high level, there's a couple of things that I would, uh, that I would look at is um, if your building has been damaged, if your building has been totaled, or even if there's a, a potential there for smoke loss, um, Look towards the coverage of uh, um, what, of what you would have as far as the building, your contents, your property of every description. However, your broker has it listed there. Um, fire is the most basic principle of insurance. That's what it all started off of. So, 
fire coverage for this. Uh, you should all have coverage for that subject to your deductible. Um, another thing is if you're just a tenant of a building and you don't own the building yourself is uh, what is the contents limit that you have um, under your under your tenant's insurance? Um, one of the things to look at too and to chat with your broker about is tenants improvements that you had. Um, if the building is being back, uh, being built back as a shell, but you've got a lot of tenants improvements in there or know anyone that does uh, the tenants improvements as well as the contents, those should be covered off in your insurance policy um, and something that you should be reviewing. The big one is always business interruption, especially in a fire loss. And, uh, you know, to touch base on it, there's uh, there's a couple of coverages and a couple of ways that business interruption can be done. Um, the, the most basic business interruption is extra expense. Um, I would hope that the majority of the business owners in Jasper do not just have extra expense. Extra expense is mad money is really what we take a look at that with is that it's money that's there for, for quick uh, things that are temporary. Um, if, if you're uh, if you're a contractor and you don't need an office to work out of, you could operate remotely and it doesn't affect your business. Um, your insurance needs are much different than a restaurant that uh, if they don't have a building to serve their clients out of, they don't have a business. Um, so extra expense would be for somebody that uh, really doesn't require um, a location to operate out of, but have mad money to uh, be able to say, you know, here's our phone number, here's our temporary. Uh, I, I always use the example of temporary fax. Can you tell I've been insurance for 17 years? We don't even use faxes anymore, hardly. Um, but uh but with all of that, it's that extra mad money to help people out immediately. Hopefully what the majority of the businesses have, and, and as you're discussing with them, is, is profits coverage of some sort for extra expense. Um, there's a number, there's there's different uh, coverages through profits, but uh, what I would look for with, uh, with, with my clients is the length that you have of your response time. A profits uh, a policy that's written properly should have enough to be able to put you back to the point where you were prior to your loss. So it'd be the loss of revenue during the time while your building's being rebuilt or being repaired, as well as continuing on up to the length of the time, length of the response time, which is typically 12 or 18 months, sometimes extended out to 24 months, um, depending on the policy. But that is to get you to the point where you are made whole at the end of it. When I look at some of the uh, concerns in Jasper is, um, you know, of course, right now you're in you're in the season where where we've got uh, tourists that are coming in and this is where the majority of the money is made. So forensic accountants and stuff like that will come in with business interruption and calculate that loss. And uh, you should be made whole on that based on uh, on the coverage that you have there. Um, another thing to focus on in profits coverage is ordinary payroll. Um, so your employees, your key employees that uh, that need to be retained and need to continue to be paid through that process, uh, there is an aspect of ordinary payroll, and typically that's 90 or 180 days coverage there um, that, that you can have. So very, very high level. But those are your main basic things is your contents, property of every description, and your business interruption. Um, I don't think that we're looking at any point where you know, somebody's going to be liable for another person's damage. It's a wildfire. So I'm not going to get into the commercial general liability aspect of it, but those will be your biggest things. Remind your broker as well that when you're sitting down or the adjuster that you're working with, look at the extensions of coverage. There's sometimes things that aren't covered in your policy, but when you have a major loss, there's extensions of coverage that we can go in and grab and, uh, and pull from there. So hopefully there's some help there. Um, on your personal insurance, uh, touch base on that really quick is that uh, with your dwelling, hopefully there's uh, there's some coverages that are really important to have and the best of the best in the industry is guaranteed replacement cost on your home. Anytime you see a major loss that happens like this, we all know the building costs are going to go through the roof because you've got uh, you've got a reduced labor pool, you've got a demand on supplies, you've got a number of, of uh, everything like that there. So dwelling values will increase as far as rebuilding costs. Guaranteed replacement cost will protect that increase there. Um, single limit of insurance is another word that you want to uh, be aware of where your dwelling value, you have percentages for detached structures, contents, additional living expenses. Typically the way that that works, don't expect everybody to remember it, but uh, you'll have the value of the dwelling. And let's say the dwelling is $500,000. 
depending on the company, you'll have 10 to 15% for detached structures up to that amount. So 50 to $75,000. Contents will be 70% of that amount or 80% up to that. Of course, we got to go through and see what's been lost. And then additional living expenses is 20% of that. And I, of that limit of the, of the 500,000. Um, big thing to know with additional living expenses, of course, is that as you are um, out of pocket of these additional uh, expenses and charges, maybe potentially hotel rooms, eating out because there's no uh, stove uh, or, or anywhere to prepare a meal, um, additional family costs because uh, someone's here and another person's there, traveling for work, those sorts of things. Those are all your additional living expenses that should be considered. And uh, don't hesitate to sit down and chat with your broker about that. Um, I, I know myself, I would love to help absolutely every and any person that's in a position. Um, I'm one person. I don't know that I can. But uh, what what my hope is, is if there is anything that I can do to help, I mean, I'm happy to uh, put my contact information in and um, please reach out to me or to my team. Um, if there's something that I can do, uh, talking about insurance in 10 minutes is definitely not going to suffice. But um, if if there is something that is required, I will do my best to uh, to help anyone out in any way that I can. And uh, I'll make sure that my contact info is in there. So um, I hope that covers off what uh, what we're looking for today, Shauna. Thanks so much, Aaron. And um, because we are ahead of schedule a little bit, uh, Paul actually threw a question in the chat for you. Uh, Aaron, we're moving towards reopening to a visitor economy. However, for most businesses that are able to open levels and revenues will likely be far lower than usual. How will this impact interruption insurance? Yeah, great question. So um, assuming that the policy is uh, is written properly in there and there is a loss of profits form in there, um, what they will do is they'll look at your books in previous years. And the reason that I said forensic accounting in there is because you, you need that. You need an accountant that's familiar with looking at the previous years and the trends and look at uh, not only the gross receipts that were that were invoiced, the amount of money that came in, but the actual profit that's made out of that. Looking at your standing charges as far as mortgages or, uh, you know, taxes or anything like that. And that all comes into there. And um, as it is peak season, of course, and you're looking at uh, at that there, they should be able to get in there and get uh, get some funds. One of the things that I would request is if I was in any one of your position is, yes, you're going to have a business interruption. There's staff that you have to pay. There's bills that you have to pay. Knowing that you have that if you have the coverage getting an advance on that uh, so that you can continue on with things and not, uh, you know, not have to take out loans or, or be completely broken. You know, unfortunately, I, I'm really hoping this isn't something where people have to close their businesses out. If the insurance policies are done correctly, they, they should be able to pull through. Um, does that answer the question that was in the chat or is, or is there a supplementary question to that? Paul, did you have anything to follow up? <laughs> Can you can can you hear me on here, um, Sean? Oh, okay. Yeah, Aaron, if I could just speak directly to you. Um, sure. I'm on the Chamber of Commerce, but I'm also with uh, Sundog Tours. And just we have been having questions from quite a few people, uh, local business that have just said, you know, would I have been better off or am I better off just to try to even remain closed, you know, and ride out the summer? Like, am I going to be potentially damaging myself by reopening and you know trying to pay staff, um, I, I mean I know a lot of these things are going to be are going to be policy specific, but it's mm -hmm. something that I've been asked, particularly since the um, you know since it looked like we we're going to be opening earlier than what everybody expected. It seems like we backed off a little on that, but it's something that I was asked by a lot of our membership. Just are are we going to be put in a potentially damaging spot by scrambling to open? with very little commerce actually happening. But um, I think you've done a good job of answering that. It sounds to me like it is fairly policy specific, but um, I don't, I mean, if, if businesses again, choose to stay closed um, because they just don't see that their business being viable with what they forecast as visitation levels, how would you potentially see that um, shaking out or, or is that even an option? Um, broad strokes, Paul, great question. Um, a couple of things that I would look at there is that um, 
Anytime that there is an insurance claim, it's our responsibility to mitigate a claim. So to prevent further damage. Um, part of that would be when you look in a business interruption, if you have the ability to open up and make revenue, um, you know, it's it should be something that we should continue on business as normally as possible. Um, so I, I, I don't think that anybody is penalizing themselves by uh, keeping the business closed. Because what they have to look at is they have to look at this year's potential as well as previous years and the amount of coverage that somebody has in place. So, you know, if a person had been billing, you know, um, $200,000 a month or something like that, and they open their business up and all they can do is $25,000, um, you know, the, the difference of that should be made up by the insurance. And a person's not going to be penalized because they start their business back up. That's not the way that it's... Uh, supposed to be it's it's to make that person whole and um yeah I, I hope that i hope that helps answer the question but mitigate the loss um if you can get back up to business as, as normally as possible as as soon as possible um and some of them won't some businesses won't be able to open up right i mean nobody's expected to and i'm not being smart saying this but nobody's expected to try to open up a restaurant on the street corner after their building has burnt down that's just that's just out of the question, right? But if there's a business that can be opened up and that you can continue on as normally as possible to try to um, make some income in there, I would strongly suggest doing that. Um, uh, we all know, even even for the benefit of just being able to do something, uh, we know how we know how good that is for people to do something and feel like uh, something is normal in their lives, right? Uh, that's what I've seen a lot in claims is just to get started and just just move back forward. Uh, Ralph, I saw you had your hand up there. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Aaron. First of all, thank you for participating. I had to step out for a moment and and um, Paul asked a very good question about it. Should we continue or should we not continue for businesses? And I want to emphasize that Jasper works on the bell curve. And where we are right now, when the fire happened, was right there. And in three months, that would be our normal business cycle. So it's going to be very interesting when you talk to your insurer about your 12 months business cycle over time, what that revenue looked like. And, you know, Paul, you make a good point. Maybe it's better to plan to reopen strong in the spring when cash flows are there. And I think each individual business working with their insurer will make that decision. Thanks, Ralph. Aaron, do you mind if I just ask you one more question? I, did, I mean, I heard we're a little ahead of schedule. 100%. So. 100%. Um, so, you know, again, from what I'm hearing, you know, I, I will say from the companies that we work with, uh, you know, larger wholesale um, international companies, the good news is they are very keen to, to continue promoting Jasper. And I think probably more than ever, they want to see Jasper recover and they care about the community. They care about the product. But again, getting back to the interruption and how this could potentially impact business, let's say for whatever reason that business levels, even going into say next year, are just are just not where we thought, you know, because of factors related to the fire. How long would a typical interruption claim um, be like, does it go on a company's fiscal year? Is it based on is it based on date of date of disaster? Um, if how, how long could it could a claim potentially be carried on to say that, listen, I'm nowhere near my historical levels due to factors out of my control? Yeah, great question. So um, any profits, uh, any profits policy will have a, a time, you know, a, a response time that's within that. And uh, typically, if it's just something that's included in the package or something that, uh, you know, um, is uh, has just been bought typically it's a 12 month policy um it can be extended out to 18 months or 24 months and that's from the date of the loss um one of the things with that too there is that uh you you triggered my mind on it is that um remember too that when you're in a claim situation is that from the date of the loss which is the date of the fire um you have a two-year period after that um of where your claim needs to be completed if it's not completed within that time, and I would assume that when you have a place like Jasper with the amount of damage that there, there's some places that might not be completed within two years. 
um, that's an opportunity to sit down with uh, with your lawyer to extend um, the the period of the claim there because there's it's a it's a two year period where it needs to be started and finished, and that's that's an Alberta legislation. That's not uh, it's not insurance limitation, but it's a period of limitation, and it can be legally extended from that if the claim hasn't been completed within that. You're typically not going to see that on a profits form because a profits form is like I said uh, for business interruption normally twelve. 18, 24 months. And, and Paul, if it's, uh, again, high level on business interruption, if it's, uh, if it's, a, if it's a proper amount of insurance there and it's on a profits form there, um, it is until the business is back to the point where it was prior to the loss. So we should be looking at something where, you know, uh, if a business opens their doors and they're generating 50% of the revenue, um, you know, it should be to the point where they're generating as the revenue was and as it was trending prior to that loss. Um, so that, that that's that's important to uh, that's important to remember as well. So does that answer the question that you're looking for, Paul? Yeah, honestly, I think that that's you've given some really valuable information and you've said some things that I think will be quite reassuring to uh to a lot of our members. So I, I appreciate that. That's been, that's been good because there is, it's an anxious time out there. So knowing that they have that coverage and that this is, um, we don't really know what recovery time is going to be like. Um, so it's to know that there, it, it's not a, it's not a short-term thing that um, there is going to be an adequate recovery time while still being insured is, is good to know, Aaron. So thanks for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, hundred um, percent. If I can, Shauna, do I have two seconds or no? Uh, well, we're getting over time, but yeah, if you have something in closing, I, I do see we have a hand up as well. So okay, yeah, we can grab that one if you want, Shauna, and then I'll be really quick and wrap it up. Whoever's on the phone, go ahead. Okay, I don't see them coming off mute. Uh, it, just, just what I was going to say, and Paul, you just, uh, it's, uh, it's struck in my head based on what you had said there, and um, I hope that uh, I hope that it helps a little bit too. Is I find that I re referenced at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of my conversation that just made it out with uh, with the shirt on his back. Um, I remember him being in the office and going out to his uh, going out to his place after the fire happened, and standing there with him and him just being devastated and obviously having nothing at that point and. You know, I said to him, I said, look, seeing what you have and reviewing what we have within your policy, um, I said, please trust me on it, that uh, the way that I see the policy will respond is in a year from now, you're going to be in a much different situation than you're at right now. And I think that you'll be impressed with it. Um, what was interesting to me is I was working away and I get a phone call this one day and it was this client. And I said, hey, how's it going? I said, how, how can I help you out? Is there is there anything going on? And he says to me, um, you could tell it was, you know, through tears that he was talking. He says, do you know what today is? And I said, no. And he says uh, that it was a year ago that we had that claim. And he says, you were right. Um, I've been fully indemnified and I don't, uh, I don't have any concerns um, other than the memories and the things that they've lost, but uh, you know, insurance uh, fully indemnified them. And that's really what my hope is for the folks in Jasper is that, uh, is that the policies can do just that. Excellent. Well, thank you again, Aaron, for joining us. So greatly appreciated. And uh, just to anybody I know, we do have a hand up, but um, we're just going to try and get back on track. Uh, and we will leave space at the end of the program for questions. So please log your question and we'll make sure to get to it after we get through our next few speakers. Uh, so I'm really excited to introduce Kathy Keogh. Uh, she's the Director of Counseling well, Initiatives the at the Calgary call Counseling call Center. Call Kathy. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me well? This is my pleasure to be here today. I am Kathy, and I'm here representing Counseling Alberta. Counseling Alberta is a division of Calgary Counseling Centre, and it is a partnership with the government of Alberta. We started working much more closely together about three years ago as a response to COVID, and we've continued to build and enhance our programming. And I'll just sort of briefly describe what we have, how we offer it, and how people can access service and, um, and hopefully be able to address any of your concerns about mental health. And you can always pass the 
information along. So we offer, we have a huge team of registered counselors that provide virtual counseling. We also have a team of partner sites that throughout the province, seven different sites, Red Deer, Lethbridge, Edmonton, Fort McMurray, what else am I missing? Medicine Hat, Grand Prairie. They work with us and they have the options for in-person if people would prefer to work with somebody in person. And they also have that virtual offering. And we know that that is effective and impactful, but not for everyone. It's not the first preference. Um, we, within our services, we offer a wide array. One of the first things I want to ensure that I punctuate is that our services are barrier free. So with the generous assistance of the government and other partners, services offered no fee. There is no wait list and people will be assigned within two to three days to a counselor. And especially if when they complete or register for counseling, they indicate that it's fire related, we'll even do our best to get them in sooner. We do have availability daily if, the, um, if a person feels that they require something more immediate. We're a generalist practice. We you work take cash? People. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God bless you. So. Oh. Bless you too. I, I hear somebody not on mute. <laughs> We're a generalist practice. We work with people from ages three up to 103. We provide individual counseling, couple counseling, family counseling, and we also can offer group counseling. And there's ways that we can do that. Group is often is mostly a virtual service at this point. Um, our top requests are anxiety, depression, and couples counseling. And when there is um, hazardous events, we have been a partner with, with in Calgary with the emergency wellness response team. And we have responded to five or six events at this point, and there's cumulative now experience information and even a body of research. So we're there to provide the best services that we possibly can in the most timely way. And um, we also are pleased with the offering where we can, we use some tools that provide us with some baselines, give us a sense of where people are, um, and we share that with them each and every session. And we work to help them accomplish their aims. And especially in times like this, often it's psychological recovery, which is about helping people uh, stabilize, helping them look at where they are with resourcing, where their emotional or mental reserves are. It depends on each situation. It's unique, it's personal, and everybody handles and copes differently. Uh, so parent, people who maybe are individual, people who are fa in families, people who are caregivers, we can provide those services right across that spectrum. Um, and within that response, we also want to keep people connected in the recovery periods as people are adjusting, staying connected to others, staying connected to services, and feeling relevant and seen is really, really important. So we're one part of a continuum. We work closely with Alberta 211, both the Calgary line and the Edmonton line. And we've had a number of meetings that started about two and a half months ago to ensure that if people call 211, they have a quick and easy access back into Counseling Alberta, which would be 211 and then the number six will assist immediately with getting um, responses and resources for anything related to, um, to, to fire or to, to relocation or any of those other sorts of concerns. Uh, we are currently working on developing a resource list, a toolkit, a reserve of other information, including podcasts, uh, research, other things that people might be interested in. It will be, I'm told, available on our website, which is counselingalberta.com within the next couple of days. So we're doing whatever we can to um, provide accurate information, to be accessible, to hopefully be able to be with people in very, very difficult times and to assist anybody who's looking for those types of services. Any questions or anything that I can expand on? Uh, Kathy, are you you're able to stay on with us for Q&A at the end? I can, yeah. Um, Excellent. Oh, at the end, 
it's, yeah, we're we're done at four thirty. So oh, I'm, we're gonna do Q and A for about fifteen minutes before that. I will try. I'm also part of the um, working at the reception center for Calgary, yes. so I'm scheduling myself tightly these days. But I will. I'll well, try. you know what, then, Kathy, I'll just maybe throw it out. If there's anybody has a question specifically uh, for you, we'll we'll field that now uh, and give them the opportunity to ask you. That would be and great. If, and if I could ask, Kathy, are you able to put the the uh, website address into the chat uh, so that, that people can just pick that up and and know where to go to find those very very important resources? Any questions? Yeah, I see one in the chat, Kathy. Uh, the question from Giselle is, are the mental health services available in different languages? So they are available in different languages. We have um, first language speakers in about 16 different languages, but that inventory also shifts and changes. We have counselors leaving and joining us continually. So it depends on the language. And the tools that we use are available in 26 different languages, and they are app-based, uh, but very, very helpful for people to be able to track where they're at and what their progress is. Thank you so much. So I don't see any other questions with that, Kathy. Uh, you know, as oh, long as we have the, the, yes. Sorry, if I may, uh, on behalf of Helen and myself, uh, Kathy, you're working, you're there at the uh, Welcome Reception Center in Calgary? I have been, yes. Yeah, so just on behalf of um, all of the residents who are in Calgary, and there are uh, a huge number right now, um, thank you for all of the work that you're doing and everything you're providing. Um, it is just so critical when we uh, talk to people and about the support they're receiving. And uh, what we've seen across the province and in BC, um, where I am right now, it is it is uh, quite phenomenal. And Helen, I, I think you may want to echo the same sentiment about our thank yous. Absolutely, Ralph. Um, it's been just, I was in Belmont in BC for the first uh, two weeks and I've been to Edson and now I'm in Hinton and um, I just want to thank everybody for all you're doing for us. It's just having these services in place has meant so much to our community. Thank you. I, I, will, I will take that and spread that because, of course, it's a coordinated effort. And at the reception center in Calgary, and this is just my personal piece, is being able to be there, being able to watch the strength in the communities when people see their neighbors, when they see their family members, when they see people that maybe are just acquaintances. And that includes the temporary workers and the seasonal workers. That's also been, um, been a pleasure because for some of them, identification was an issue, medication was an issue. And just when we could all work together and, um, and work our services that are already in place in a different way. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us, Kathy, and and thanks, you know, just echoing thanks to the colleagues that are supporting those that have been displaced in Jasper uh, to find the resources that they need. Um, so now we'll move on to um, a presentation on um, banking uh, and financials. So if I can call on the ATV team, we have several of you here with us today. So Ben Keys, who is your Jasper branch manager, and Acton Sitar, Senior Manager, Entrepreneurship, and Andrew Coborn, Senior Sales Manager, AGB. Thank you. Um, I'll speak first. Um, I'll be speaking more specifically to ATB Financial, but all of the FIs have very similar approaches to what's going on. Um, we, just knowing how tough this has been on everybody, we catered um, our contacts with all businesses via text, phone calls, or emails basically just asking anyone who would like information to reach out. So if you haven't spoken to your FI, we strongly suggest you do. Um, ATB has a dedicated team and we'll share the link in the chat. Um, all of these responses are happening within a few hours or next business day at the latest, depending on when it's requested. In addition, we have implemented service fee um, suspensions for all accounts for an immediate three months. 
So if this hasn't happened, please reach out to your FI or to us and we can make sure that does. And that's not only for the businesses, that's for staff, anyone who frequents the locations. And of course, many of your staff may have addresses outside of Jasper. So if they do, please have them reach out to, we'll take care of that. Um, a few other things, um, we've extended hours in Hinton because we know many people are displaced there. So we're operating six days a week there and we'll continue that for the foreseeable future, probably to the end of the summer but we'll play that on the need. Um, that being said, we will be in Jasper on Friday and fully operational for both Friday and Monday. And um, what I will do is pass it over to Afton to talk about financing deferrals and short and long-term options there. Thanks, Ben. So first I wanna say uh, my heart really goes out to everyone who's been impacted by this devastating loss. As a resident of Hinton, um, I can speak for myself and most likely most in our community that we consider Jasper to be very much a part of our backyard. And, you know, I, I just can't even imagine what this loss feels like for you all. And we're definitely here with you for the recovery process. So on the business end of things, uh, for uh, something that we'd like to recommend is making sure that you have all of your documentation in order and like if you need to reach out to CRA, your accountant, your bank, definitely do so. Uh, probably sooner rather than later if you have the ability to. You know, we any one of your professionals can help with reprinting or sharing digital copies of any documentation that you need for your insurance company, uh, for any of your filing, anything like that. So make sure to do that. Now, with relief options, I know on with ATB, we have custom relief options for each one of our clients, depending on what your borrowing level is, how we can support that way. We definitely do have relief options. So give us a call if you bank, you know, wherever you bank, give your banker a call. I know it's always fun to call the banker, but you need definitely call the banker uh, because they'll be able to, to help you. If they don't know what's going on, then they won't be able to support you. I know we've spoken to to our, our business clients in the area, but keep in the keep us in the loop as often as you can. Things change on the daily, on the weekly, and however you need support, we definitely want to be there to support you. And uh, you know, like Ben mentioned, we are offering uh, relief for your account fees and everything like that. But if there's anything else that we can support with, please let us know. Ben, did I miss anything? One additional thing, um, just because you may have got relief in one way or another or account fees, please keep regular contact with your advisor or your institution because these will change. Um, what, we, what we're doing today might not be the same as what we might do in the long term as well. So regular contact will really help out as well. And one other thing is if, if your bank has offered you relief and you didn't want to take it, please take it because it might not be offered again in the future. So if you're offered something like a deferral or an extension or anything like that, you can always make up the payment later, take what they're offering. All right, I think we're good. Thank you. Uh, ben Afton, um, is, are we also hearing from Andrew as well? I think Andrew is here to, to jump in if either one of us became a little bit overcome and weren't able to share. But Andrew, would you like to share? <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing I would probably add is we I have also working to negotiate any insurance checks without holds as well. It's one thing that we've been talking about as an organization is making sure that if you do get insurance money, um, come to the branch and we can help you negotiate those checks so that you don't have a hold and you can access the cash. Excellent, thank you. And and some great advice on the banking side. Um, contact your banker, I think Afton said it well. <laughs> Make sure that you're in contact with them. Uh, so Shawna, your mic uh, popped onto mute for some reason. Oh, it's because Dana muted me, no. <laughs> Just a second, yeah. So we do have some questions in the chat, but um, if you have anything you wanna ask of our experts, now is the time. Um, we have about 25 minutes left. So any and all questions are on the table uh, as you're looking at you know, what you need to do to return to business and, and get back into the community. Uh, so the question that I have is for you, Erin. 
Our museum is operated by the Historical Society and we have coverage under the municipality insurance umbrella, not a municipal building. Would we have access to ordinary payroll type benefits as well? Yeah, without reviewing the policy, I, that's that's tough to know. Um, dealing with uh, uh, there's there's some in municipalities that we actually insure, and um, yeah, business interruption is something that is available to them. Ordinary payroll is part of business interruption, um, and it is separate from business interruption, so it needs to be scheduled um, unless it's a package policy that just includes some certain amounts there. So. Um, uh, that's really tough to, to know what that is without, uh, without actually looking at the coverage there. Um, but yeah, we definitely suggest, uh, reviewing it, whether it be with your broker or the, uh, the administrator that you deal with at the municipality or, or whatever it be, um, to see what coverages would be available there. Um, ordinary payroll can sometimes be a, a tricky coverage. Um, and the reason why it could be a tricky coverage is because they look at, uh, the employee's that can't be replaced. Um, so uh, they're like temporary employees and stuff like that. That doesn't fall under ordinary payroll. Ordinary payroll is more there for uh, for a manager that can't be let go. Um, you know, a uh, like a head chef or something like that in a restaurant. Those those sorts of things is is typically what's going to fall under that ordinary payroll. Um, but yeah, review it with the municipality, and um, they should be able to have answers for you there. Sorry, I can't give you more than that, but uh, without seeing the policy, I just, I just, I just don't know. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, Ralph, I see your hand up. Maybe just um, uh, thank you. Direct um, your question. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm I'm going to refer to the question because the question was, would the municipality cover? I think the museum payroll, and I'll take from this conversation and ask the question to our municipality. We don't normally are not normally involved in the museum payroll, but we are a funder. Um, so I'll ask the question to see if, if there is any opportunity there and, and we'll be able to get back to Herb directly. Thank you, Ralph. Are there any other questions? I don't see any hands up. Anything somebody wants to put into the chat? Shauna. Yes, go ahead, Paul. So I just, well, there is a little bit of a gap in questions here. Uh, mine is not, uh, I mean, it is a question, but it's also a um, a statement and just an assurance of awareness and that um, Highway 93, because this is a business meeting and we have uh, people from every level of government on here, I just want to make sure that there's an awareness of the importance of Highway 93. And essentially without it open, we do not have a viable product to Jasper. So clearly getting that road safe to open is paramount. I mean, obviously it's safety first, but I just want to make sure that there is an understanding that in the summertime in particular, there without access to Highway 93 and to be able to go between Jasper, Lake Louise and Banff, we really do not have a viable international product here. Um, in order to, to attract our international customers back, and our biggest partners in the railway via and Rocky Mountaineer, it really is imperative that we get that operational. So I know when Parks is talking about uh, where they're gonna redeploy efforts and so on and the support they need, that is one of the places that's absolutely key for us as businesses here. So just a statement, but also wanna make sure there is an awareness out there. Um, I think that I would, uh, well, certainly anybody in the hospitality industry as is as a total understanding of that. But for the people that may not understand our economy as thoroughly as the locals do, that's a very important, it's it's a piece that's vital year round, but never more than right now. So having Highway 16 open is great. It's a great first step, but in order to become more viable to, for us to get back to anything close to normal in terms of travel habits for tourists and particularly international tourists, we have to have Highway 93 open all the way through. So I know that there are people on the line that have a lot to do with um, what's happening on that road. And um, 
I just thought it was really necessary to put that out there. Thank you, Paul. And uh, I'm not sure we do have a lot of representation from government of Alberta. I'm not sure if anybody um, would want to respond to that, not putting anybody on the spot, but just giving opportunity if there's any updates. Sean, it's Chelsea from Parks Canada. I would just say, Paul, I've noted all of those, uh, all of that information. Sorry, my camera was off. Uh, Paul, I've noted all of that information uh, uh, word for word, uh, and I will bring that back to our incident management team. I know the crews are working incredibly hard uh, with the focus, uh, first first focus on uh, containing that perimeter around the town site, uh, second focus on really actioning that highway and getting it opening. So we hear you and thank you for, for, uh, for echoing that as well. And and know that I am bringing that back, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Chelsea, appreciate Thank that. Thanks for that response, Chelsea. I see that we have a hand raised and it's uh, a telephone caller. So if you wanna unmute yourself and uh, just direct your question yes. to who you would like the response from. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Hello? we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, yeah. thank okay. you. Okay, um, maybe this is um, directed to Parks Canada, but um, I'm a, a long-term resident of Jasper. I have a business, but my business is located in on Highway 93, uh, five kilometers from town. On Monday, we were given the information that everybody can come in as residents. Um, unfortunately, this morning, I got note that I cannot go on Highway 93, five kilometers to my property, my business, my home. I'd like to know why was that said and why was that not directed on Monday? I have now staff coming in on Friday and they're coming in from all over the place and I feel like I'm being discriminated. Um, I need an answer and I need it fairly quickly because like I said, I have staff coming from all over anticipating that they're all going to be back on the property by Saturday. Um, yesterday, I was told that it was good to go and that my staff and everybody was able to come in on Friday. And then today, I get almost kicked in the shins and telling me, no, anybody on the Highway 93 cannot go. I'm just five kilometers outside of town. And like I said, I'm a long-term resident, business owner. Uh, I don't understand why this came up. Can anybody help me? Yeah, thank you. I missed your first name there. What was your first name? Lena. My name is Lena. Lena, okay. Um, I just put the email, uh, the liaison email in the chat. If you could just send me an email with your contact information, I'll follow up on that and get clarity there for you. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm I'm on the phone. I I my email, I, I can I can give you my email address, but right now I, I would like to get an answer from somebody at part. We don't have a chance. Perfect. And I've I don't taken have down your I've taken down your phone number and I'll get someone to give you a call right away directly. Thank you. But can somebody answer, can somebody answer the question? Can I don't. I, I will have to ask the the management team, the incident management team, on that. Um. So I'll I'll get someone to call you right away. So no one's going to be able to help me then. I will help you right after this call. I will give you a call directly for sure. To understand the the concern, and your location. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for that, Chelsea. Thank you. Anyone else have anything? that they want to surface? Any comments, questions? There is a question in the chat. Um, okay. I'm not sure who to best direct it to. Uh, it's regarding planning to come to Jasper on Saturday to remove restaurant food inventory and inquiring about access to water supply and also where to be able to dispose of food. I'm sure if Helen or Ralph, if that's uh, something you guys have eyes on. Mm 
Thank you. Um, I don't have the exact answer, but we will send it to our team. And um, if this person can give us their email or phone number, we will have one of our um, staff call. I do know that water in certain areas, the town is up and running, some areas is not. And as I don't know, don't know where the business is, but we will definitely get them the information. Thank you, Helen. So I would I would um, say maybe uh, Shintana, if you want to just place your your email address in the chat so that Helen and Ralph can pick that up. And and Ralph, I saw you came off the microphone too. Did you want to add to that? Yeah, actually, what I'd like the caller to do is go to the reentry guide that's online and go to number seven, waste disposal. That'll help with some of the information. And I want to reemphasize individuals need to look at the reentry guide. It's very comprehensive. And if you take five minutes to take a look and, and go through, you'll find some very definite answers um, to questions, um, not just about daily garbage, but longer term garbage, for example. So I, again, if we can spread the word, the wildlife fire entry guide that people are going to be getting upon entering the park will answer a lot of these questions. Thanks, Ralph. And I noted that you guys put that in the chat as well. So if anybody has saved the chat, they'll have that link and can take a look at that online as well. Anyone else? Dana, were there any more in the chat? Nothing that I am seeing. Okay. It's the opportunity to, to ask the questions that you need answered. Okay, well, we'll give everybody a few minutes back in their day. Uh, before we do that, I just wanted to hand over to my colleague, Scott, with um, BCA, Business Council of Alberta. Sorry, I always say BCA, Scott, because it's just, we all think in acronyms, don't we? That's in fine. This world. <laughs> um, and he's just going to share a little bit of insights about um, the business recovery handbook that you guys uh, pulled together after Fort McMurray, uh, I believe it was. Or anyway, yeah, you actually, could give the, uh, history. the the floods in, in 2013 was just the first bit. Oh, Shauna, thank you so awesome. much. I'll be really yeah. quick, everybody, because uh, I know that we're right at the end of the meeting here. My name is Scott Crockett, and I'm a vice president with the Business Council of Alberta, uh, or BCA, as some people say it. And actually, in a volunteer capacity, I'm also a member of Canada Task Force 2, Alberta's disaster response team. And so I've uh, been able to assist in both those cap capacities, many communities with a response and recovery to disasters. And I just have sort of three quick messages for you as we as we finish today off. The first one is that uh, things get better and we're gonna rebuild. Um, we've seen this before, unfortunately, lots of times as Albertans in Calgary after floods and Fort McMurray and Slave Lake after fires, just know that uh, communities recover and businesses recover. So that's message one. And message two is we have playbooks that really help. Uh, there is a business recovery uh, handbook that uh, the chamber will have. I'll, I'll make sure that Sean has got it uh, to put as part of their, their resources. And uh, this has been a way for communities and businesses to recover. In fact, the Alberta model has now been used all over the world. Uh, pioneered by chambers and governments in, Al in Alberta working together to give you a sense of hope and optimism about it. Um, in, in Calgary, after those floods, more than 99% of businesses that were affected uh, deeply by the flood recovered afterwards. So less than 1% failed. And I, I have every confidence that Jasper could have uh, that those same kind of numbers again. I mean, we'd love to aim for 0% failure, absolutely. And then maybe the last message, I think you heard it today, is I'd ask anyone in this call to, to really think very seriously, make three phone calls, okay? Your first phone call, call a counselor. You know, you've heard from Kathy before, it's free and there's no wait list. Your mental health is more important than anything. Number two, call your insurance. And number three, call your banker. And if, if that feels hard to do, trust me, you'll feel a lot better after you've made those uh, those three phone calls. And uh, and I'll just close by saying, today's the start, not the end of, uh, of the business recovery, but it gets better from here. And um, when the time is right to welcome visitors back into your community, all of Alberta and we we as well will play a big role in in, in celebrating that and shouting it from the rooftops and trying to get people back to do what Jasper does best, which is uh, enjoy the great outdoors that we have to offer. And you're just, uh, I want you to know that you're incredibly well supported here by, by great civic leaders and business leaders. I, I personally come out of the chamber movement and I can tell you that you have an exceptional local leader in Patty and, and an exceptional provincial leader in Shauna. And uh, they've just put in a ton of work to, to pull this together quickly. And I know that their work's only getting started. So thanks partners. And that's it for me.
Sorry, you guys. I'm in the airport and I'm trying to talk around people announcing stuff. So I'm just going to give it one more second here. There we go. Uh, sorry about that. It just uh, too many things going on. But uh, I, so, Scott, you just kind of took everything I was going to say. So I'm not sure <laughs> what I can add to that. But uh, just so that, yes, uh, we're here uh, to support you. Uh, a couple of the things um, uh, that the Alberta Chair and maybe, Scott, do you have the link for the, the guide? Do you mind popping that in the chat to anybody who's um, going to capture the chat and wants all the resources in one place? Um, also, the Alberta Chamber of Commerce, we've been uh, working with the government of Alberta on re business resiliency resources for these uh, types of uh, emergencies since January. And so I'm going to ask Dana if you want to put the, the link in the chat. There's a lot of resources there. Uh, this guide is one of them um, that, you know, there's tons of resources that have been curated across the province of Alberta. Um, just to support this exact time and supporting businesses as they they are looking to get back into their communities. And then finally, um, we have also stood back up the Chamber Relief Trust Fund. So that's the fund that will that we put in place for the, the floods uh, in 2012 uh, to support the local chamber to get back on their feet. If there's any anything that's not covered by insurance, any events that have to be canceled, uh, just making sure that your local chamber will be there to support your business community as you look at reopening. And again, I can't echo enough and Scott said it, um, our hearts are with all of you. Uh, we're here to support however we can. Uh, this is just the first in what we hope will be a series of ways that we can support the, the Jasper community as you look at recovery. And just know that we'll be here to support your local chamber leader as well. Uh, so with that, um, I'll maybe pass over to Patty. Do you wanna have the last final thank you and last word on this town hall? I wonder if she's having some technical difficulties. I think she was. Anyway, I know so I can. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. We're on. Hi, been working off of two different computers throughout this, so it's been it's been fun. Um, I just want to say thanks again to everyone who's taken the time to attend. Uh, Know that this is not, and Scott, I'm going to steal your words, this is not the end, it's the beginning. And we can definitely manage all of this with your assistance and with your collaboration. We will come back. And I'm I'm thrilled that you've attended. Again, thank you to everyone, first responders and anyone else who is involved with the volunteer effort and the residents for your patience and understanding and the businesses as well. We're working. We hear you and we're on it. Expect a phone call pretty quick. I'm going to be doing a one-on-one -on -one chat with everybody that I can possibly get on the line. Uh, and I'll start that on Monday when we are back in Jasper. So thank you. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you, Scott, again, and all of our speakers today. You've been great. Thank you. And and just a quick thank you to everybody for joining us. And thank you to all our speakers for volunteering your time. Uh, and again, our, our thoughts and wishes are for the best re-entry possible for the, the Jasper business community. Take care and good luck on Friday. <laughs>